Today we're going to fill in our first three columns, our first four columns actually, on our nursing care plan. You'll only put one problem on each side of your care plan. We'll try to do at least two nursing diagnoses. Um, if we can get three done, that's great. Each paper though will have, each side of the paper will have one. Next week we'll build further on that. So we'll fill our first columns in up to our nursing diagnosis um, this week, okay? If you look at your cluster sheet, where is the most data clustered? Okay, I hear, I hear love and self-esteem, activity, prevention from harm. Love and, let's take them one at a time. Love and self-esteem has a lot of data. This, this case study has a big love and self-esteem issue. What it tends to be, though, for you guys doing these first diagnoses is it's real abstract. Not now, but when you get down to your interventions, it ends up to be real abstract. So I like to hold off till the end to do that diagnosis, and we will do it. But I like to wait and do stuff that's more concrete, like um, concrete, so to speak, that your nursing intervention for something will be, you know, vital signs every four hours. It's real concrete for you guys, as opposed to, you know, patient will participate in, you know, an activity and, you know, I'll use open-ended questions. It, it's a little more difficult for you guys to do at this level. Um, by the time that we finish doing all of our problems, though, you guys will be ready for it. So I want to wait. Okay, so we'll try to get three diagnoses done today. So let's look at our next one that you guys said, prevention from harm and activity. What's our guy's overwhelming problem, though? What is his, what's he there for? What's he admitted for? Right, and what's that, what's that CVA caused? Right-sided right weakness. Okay, so we do have a prevention from harm and an activity problem, right? Mm -hmm. So our first, our basic human need we can put down as prevention from harm and activity. You can have more than one basic human need. Prevention from harm also spills over into asepsis, right? And when we start looking at skin, we're going to look at prevention from harm basic human need being affected and our asepsis basic human need affected. So we can put two, two basic human needs. So I'm going to put prevention from harm and activity. Okay? So our first column's filled out. How simple is that? Okay. Now we need to get our card out of our blue book because that card is going to tell us what problems or what diagnoses we want to identify. Now the problem is when you guys look at that, you don't know quite which one fits. So what we have to do is we have to make a list and then look up the definitions. So first, I'm going to have you guys look at that, call out some problems that maybe sound like it could be, and I'm going to write them up on the board. Give me the page number, the first page number after that problem. We're going to write them on the board, and after we write our list, then we're going to look them up. Okay? So does anyone see anything that could be? Activity and tolerance. What page is that on? Sixty? Okay, sixty-three or sixty? Sixty to sixty. Oh yeah, just give me the first number. Sixty. Okay, what else? Falls risk. Falls risk four. Okay, what what page is that? Two seventeen through two twenty-one. What page? I'm sorry. Two seventeen. Yeah. Okay, I have like three of you calling it out, and it kind of. Okay. Anything else? Walking impaired. Walking impaired. Where's that? Um. 597. Okay. Okay, what else? Mobility impaired? Mobility impaired, sure. Um, 331. Now, that mobility impaired, does it have something after it? Bed. 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 Okay, so that's different. Yeah. Okay, so do we have a mobility impaired bed? We don't know because we, you know, we really haven't read the definition. So I'm going to put bed there. Is there any other mobility impaired? Wheelchair. wheelchair. Do we have a wheelchair? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so what page is that one on? 337. Okay, is there any other mobility impaired that physical. we might? No. Yeah, physical. So physical mobility impaired? Yes. yes. Okay. What page is that on? 333. Okay, anything else? As you look at those sheets? Urinary incontinence. Okay, but is that part of our theme that we have now? I'm not saying that that's not a oh, problem, okay. but re remember what basic human needs we're doing. We'll get to that. Self-care deficit. Self-care deficit. Now, self-care deficit has four different components. You can have, there's four different nursing diagnoses that you could do. You can do self-care deficit toileting, self-care deficit grooming, grooming feeding, feeding yeah. or... What's the last one? Dressing. Dressing. Okay, so do we have a self-care deficit? One of those that we want to look at. We don't know yet. Okay, okay, but think about what our theme is. What 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 basic human need that we're looking at? Right. So let's stay. You want to do dressing? Okay. Self-care deficit. Dressing. What page? Okay, anything else? I should do it. Okay, we have activity intolerance, falls, risk for walking, mobility bed, mobility impaired wheelchair, mo physical mobility impaired, self care deficit dressing. Um, injury risk for? Is that a possibility that we maybe want to look at? For Injury risk for? Can we add that? It's up to you guys. It's your. Okay. Okay. Does that look pretty encompassing? Are we ready? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to look at each one of these problems, look at the definition, and see what we think. And we're, I'm going to have you read the definition, and I'm going to write up there what the definition is, and then we'll go back to the beginning of our list and see what doesn't fit. So if you could turn to page 310, and you'll see that there's injury risk for in a blue box. Everyone with me? And then in the blue box it says definition. Okay. Somebody read that definition at risk of injury as a result of environmental conditions interacting with the individual's adaptive and defensive resources. Okay, so risk, risk due to environment, I'm just going to write for our purposes. Okay, so page 60, activity and tolerance. And somebody else go to 217 so we can keep it moving along and get ready for the next one. So 60, activity and tolerance. Uh, insufficient physiological or psychological energy to endure or complete required or desired daily activities. Okay, decrease energy. Um, risk to fall, 217. Increased susceptibility to falling that may cause physical harm. Okay, increased susceptibility to fall. Walking impaired, 597. Limitation of independent movement within the environment of foot. Limit movement in environment. Uh, mobility impaired bed 331. Limitation of independent movement from one bed position to another. Limited movement in bed. Okay. Uh, mobility impaired wheelchair. Limitation of independent operation of wheelchair within environment. Limited movement of wheelchair. Physical mobility impaired 333. Okay, I'm going to put it here as limited body movement, multiple extremities. Self-care deficit dressing, 425, or I think it was. Sorry, I sloppy writing. 
impaired ability to perform feeding, bathing, hygiene, dressing and grooming, or toileting activities for oneself on a temporary, permanent, or progressing basis. Okay, impaired ability to dress. All right. So, is there something, and I say think kindergarten, when you have three squares in a circle and you have to pick out what doesn't fit and it's the circle that doesn't fit, is there something that we can just take out of here to start with that we know after reading the definition that it isn't applicable to our patient for this basic human need? Decreased energy. Activity intolerance, decreased energy. Do, is, that our, is that our patient? No. no. No, no. So we can get rid of it. Okay? But we wouldn't have known that until we looked it up. Okay? I don't want you guys to feel bad if you're the one who called out activity intolerance. Please don't feel bad because the only way that we would know that it wouldn't fit is if we looked it up. And I always, people sometimes feel bad like, oh, it's my definite, my diagnosis that was taken out. But it's a, we have to look it up in order to figure out what goes. Okay, is there anything else that we can take out? Think of our basic human needs. Prevention from harm and activity. Is there one more that we can just look at and say, eh, doesn't really fit with this particular basic human need? Maybe we go with a better, with a different one? In bed. In the gym. Gym. I was going to say the dressing, because so, I mean, it's just kind of yeah. so yeah. pinpoint something. Okay. Can we? Is, is everyone okay with that? Yes. I think okay. that's a good, yeah. good one to, to say yeah. goodbye to. Okay. Now, all of these other ones kind of apply. Mm -hmm. And what I say, a rule of thumb to follow, is if you have an actual problem, let's not go with the risk for because we actually have it going on. We actually have an impairment in this guy's movement, right? So anything that we would do for these risk fours, we're going to incorporate into the actual problem. So we can get rid of these risk fours, okay, because we actually have a movement issue. Everyone okay with that? All right. So our falls and our injury are gone. Now we've got a problem, don't we? We've got a problem. Our guy, our patient has a walking issue, right? Mm -hmm. He's got a, a, a mobility in bed issue. He's not turning freely from side to side, right? He's got a wheelchair issue. He's not moving easily in an environment with a wheelchair. And he's got a physical mobility impaired issue, right? Is there one problem that encompasses all of them? These, there's some very specific issues that we have here. Is there one of these diagnoses that we can take and put everything into that kind of is like an umbrella? Physical mobility. Absolutely. We can take, look at it, it's limited body movement in multiple environments. We can take our walking issue and we can throw it right into physical mobility. We can take our bed issue and put it in there. We can take our wheelchair issue and put it in there. It's an it's a, it's a umbrella of all of them. Okay. We do have a transfer issue also, and we don't have transferability in here. I was kind of surprised no one said it. But transferability, if you guys will look on, on um, yeah. and just let's read the definition for that one, because um, most, most of the groups have found that one. So I want to make sure that we look at that definition for future. Go ahead and read it if you have it. Limitation of independent movement between two nearby surfaces. Right. So that one would have been another one that would have been a specific that we could have incorporated into that physical mobility. Okay? So everyone is okay with physical mobility impaired. Okay, so that's our P, right? That's our problem. Physical mobility impaired. Okay, let's go back over here to our data. You've got the data on your cluster sheet, so that's why we didn't do these two boxes first. Do we have subjective data? Is it okay if we don't have any subjective data? 
are we always going to have subjective data? No. We don't necessarily have to have subjective data. It's nice if we do, but it's not necessary. But you've got to say you have none. Okay? If you just left this blank and you handed it in to your professor, they would think that you didn't address it, that you didn't look for it, that you didn't do anything about it. They would think that it, it, you just forgot about it. Okay? So you have to identify that you have none if you have none. And you can do that with a zero with a line through it. You can write none, but identify that you have none. Okay, does everyone follow that? Mm -hmm. Okay, our objective data. What do we have? We have tons of objective data, don't we? Mm -hmm. yes. What happened to the gentleman? Why, why does he have a mobility problem? What happened to him? Stroke. 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 Okay, so CVA. And what did that CVA cause? Right side of weakness. Right side of weakness. How's the, what does the gentleman use to ambulate? Quad king. Quad He's king. the quad king. He's in a what? Wheelchair. He's in a wheelchair. That's enough data for us. Mm -hmm. that, that's enough to, to say that that's what's wrong with the gentleman. Mm -hmm. that, that problem is an issue. Now, if I put in here... Aspiration pneumonia, would it be appropriate? No. 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 If I put in here 1,800-calorie diet in objective, would that be appropriate? No. Absolutely not. I'm just talking about the data specific to these basic human needs and this problem. Clumping all the data that you pick up into your first problem, don't. It doesn't, doesn't cut it. You've got to put data that's specific for each problem. Okay. So if you're talking about aspiration, then you need to have aspiration data. If you're talking about urinary incontinence, you have to have that data. Don't just throw data willy-nilly into that column and hope that you get it right. Okay, so our P is there. Our E, or our related to, we're going to get right from our book. So we need to go to page 333, Physical Mobility Impaired. I'm going to stand behind you. Okay, and turn the page actually to 334 and see how it has the related factors. We're going to go through each one of those related factors and figure out if our patient has that. Okay? Sedentary lifestyle? Does our patient have that? No? No. Decreased muscle strength? Probably. Right side of weakness, sure. Okay, so keep that in the back of your mind. Um, intolerance to activity? Now, pain, mm -hmm. a neuromuscular impairment, caused by CVA. Our neuromuscular impairment is that CVA. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so keep that in the back of your mind. Sensory perceptual or cognitive impairment. Mm -hmm. well, Do we know that though? No, Do we have no. evidence? No. Um, uh, depressed mood. Not that we know. Nope. Okay. Um, selective or generalized malnutrition? No. We don't have malnutrition. <laughs> Lack of knowledge regarding physical activity? No. Actually, it's regarding the value of physical activity, no. Prescribed movement restrictions? No. Does everyone understand what a prescribed movement restriction is? I put a cast on your leg and tell you you can't put weight on that. That's a prescribed. Um, you have a, an ulcer on your leg and the doctor says no weight bearing. That's a prescribed, okay? Reluctance to initiate movement. No, we don't have that. So that leads us with decreased muscle strength and neuromuscular, scale, or neuromuscular impairment, right? Mm -hmm. That's our related to, okay? Decrease muscle strength and neuromuscular impairment. Right? Okay? Everyone with me? I'm making you write fast. Okay. Now, we've got to get our as evidenced by or our signs and symptoms of our patient. 
So what I say to do is say, okay, what is causing our decreased muscle strength? What is our decreased muscle strength? That's our neuromuscular impairment, is our CVA. And our decreased muscle strength is on our right-sided weakness, right? Now sometimes, I'll let you write that down. Sometimes students will take all of that objective data and stick it right into the signs and symptoms. It's okay. You can do that. It's just you don't need to. You've just justified, you've written the signs and symptoms or you've written what's caused this problem with your patient. Does it matter that you put quad cane over here? No, you don't need it over there. You're saying that your neuromuscular impairment is your CVA and your decreased muscle strength is that right side of weakness, okay? If you took all this data and put it over there, that's okay. But try, try to start thinking and be selective of what you actually need to pull over there um, because you don't need to put everything there. Okay? Everyone okay with that? Mm -hmm. So this problem would read, physical mobility impaired related to decreased muscle strength and neuromuscular impairment as evidenced by CVA and right side of weakness. Okay, that's the PES is just for you guys to remember your three components. Okay, if you don't need to use those to remember your three parts to your diagnosis, that's okay. Um, you don't have to write those as long as you have the three components. All right? That's your first problem. Next, next week with that problem, we're going to take it to the next step, which is doing the expected outcome. But that's all we're going to do with this one. Let's do a second one. Okay. Now we would just for the basic human needs, we can cross out the three we just covered or two we just covered? Um, I, wouldn't, I, I wouldn't cross them out. What, what you do when you start looking at developing a care plan is you try to say, okay, my patient's biggest problem, the, the biggest priority that I have for caring for this patient, what is it? And that's the one that you develop first. So our biggest problem, this patient's biggest problem, and the reason that he's admitted is that he's having trouble walking. He's having trouble moving. He's got that right side of weakness. So that's where I go first. That's a good question. Um, eventually we say to you, because you, you can, in extended care, you use the same ones a lot of times over and over again, is we say, okay, get creative. We know that you know that this is the priority, but let's move on and, and try different nursing diagnoses so that we can, um, learn other diagnoses because otherwise we get stuck in the same ones over and over again okay all right so let me erase these and personally I think I'd like to go um, I think the next easiest one is elimination can we go there or do you want to go somewhere else okay is that all right with everyone We'll do, we'll do multiple ones, multiple diagnoses we'll, we'll do. Um, if we do two or three this week, we'll definitely add another one next week to it, or two. Yes? Now can you just keep going down the list, or would you switch care plans for each and every goal? I mean, we have something similar where I work called a service plan, and we would have like a line, uh -huh. and then start a new goal. Or, or, or start a new, a new... Um, yeah, you, you do, do, but flip the page. Put one on each side. Remember, there's older eyes. Okay. We, you know, you've got, we've, I've, I've got 5,000 of them. So every problem, use a separate side. And that way you can have plenty of space and you're not writing like a millimeter letters and we have to like use a, a magnifying glass to see. Yeah, let's look at elimination. So um, your cluster sheet, what have you got? Okay, we've got polyps, but is that really causing us any issue right now? They were taken out, so. Right side of weakness. Okay. But we already covered that, right? Yeah, but it affects, you know, that right side of weakness is a theme that's going to affect all of our basic human needs. Okay, okay. We've got a bowel movement every three days with MET. So on our card, let's look at problems for that. 
Urinary, oh, urinary, urinary elimination. Urinary elimination that we've got problems impaired. too. Yeah. Right, so we've got two themes that we're looking at for elimination and we can develop two separate problems, so we can do that right now. Okay. Um, is there one that we want to take first? Or you want to write all of our, all of our diagnoses, our, our possible problems out while yeah. we're at it and we'll just yeah. separate them over here? Yeah. All right. So I'll put urinary up on the top and constipation stuff, or you know, bowel down at the bottom. Okay, so give me some diagnoses that we could possibly have. Uh, urinary elimination impaired. Okay. 554. Five fifty-four. What else do we have? Urinary incontinence, but then there's a bunch of. Okay, that's a, that's a problem because we don't know what each one of them means, right? Yeah. Okay, so urinary incontinence. Let's take them separately. What is the functional? Okay, so we've got five sixty one. What else do we have? Reflex. Reflex. We'll five, take five sixty four. Five sixty four. Stress. Stress. Yep. Stress. Five sixty seven. Five sixty seven. Total. 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 570. 570. Purge. Purge. 572. 572. Okay. Looking at these, we don't have any idea. It could be any of those, so we've got to eliminate them. And, you know, it's tedious at first, but as you guys start knowing these diagnoses, it gets easier and easier as you go along. Okay, so it might take us a long time getting, figuring out which one it is now, but in the future, it'll take less and less time. Do you, is that it for elimination, urinary? Okay, constipation I'm going to put down here because it's separate entities. Constipation problem? Yeah. Yeah. What page? 153. 153. Is there a risk for also? Yeah. Yes. Do we want to look at that one too? 159. Constipation perceived. Constipation perceived? 157. 157. Is that it? Okay, which one do you want to do first? They're separate entities, so we got to take one at a time. Okay, so the urine. All right, urinary elimination impaired, 554. Disturbance in urine elimination. Okay, now I'm going to erase these these as we go along and figure out which ones that we can take out of the all of the incontinence. 561, functional. Inability of usually continent person to reach toilet in time to avoid unintentional loss of urine. Can we take that one out? The guy can't reach the, the bathroom in time and that's why he's incontinent. Can we take that one out? No, because it's no. Not specifically in there because at night he right. doesn't have the urinal right at his side. Right. So we can't take that one out. No. But let's see if something's better. Okay. Okay. Uh, reflex, 564. Involuntary loss of urine at somewhat predictable intervals when a specific bladder volume is reached. So the bladder is, is too, full. too full and it spills over. Is that our patient? No. No. So we can get rid of it? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, stress, 567. Loss of less than 50 milliliters of urine occurring with increased abdominal pressure. No. 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 Does it fit our patient? No. Okay, so we can get rid of it. But we wouldn't know unless we looked it up. All right, 570 total. Continuous and unpredictable loss of urine. Do we have that? No. 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 Okay, and urge, 572. Okay, so do we have a strong sense of urgency and then an incontinence? No, so we can get rid of that? Okay, so now that brings us to two. Everyone feel comfortable with urinary incontinence functional, that that's the right one of urinary incontinence. Okay. Urinary elimination, a disturbance in urinary, urine elimination. Is that, do we have a disturbance in our elimination? Do we have something that's stopping us? You know, maybe a surgery or something like that that's, that's stopping our elimination? Is it an elimination problem? It really isn't. I mean, if, if, the, if the gentleman had his urinal, then 
he'd be able to be continent, right? Yes. Okay. So does everyone feel pretty comfortable that it's urinary incontinence functional mm -hmm. and understand why it's not really an impairment? Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. All right, so let's get this one out of here. Is it starting to make more sense to you? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so our problem is urinary incontinence Functional Okay, do we have any subjective data? So we've got to put something here That tells us we didn't just heh, forget about it Okay, what's our objective data? Incontinent of urine occasionally when the urinal is not at his side. Incontinent at night when no urinal. Is there anything else that we probably should put in there? Do you think? Maybe, maybe, maybe like a reason that why he's not jumping out of bed and running to the bathroom. Right, because because over you know that's really our umbrella issue with with this gentleman. So I think it goes a lot of places um, that we need to stick it. Okay, so we've got our data. Let's do our related to. So we've got to go to that 561 and look at our related factors and see what fits our patient. Yep, 561. Nope, nope, one over. Yep. Okay. Alter environmental factors. Poor lighting, inability to locate bathroom. Wow. Well, you can't, you can't, you can't, can't get, get up, up yeah. to get to the urinal. You can't find it. Right. Isn't that an environmental issue? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so keep that in your mind. Neuromuscular limitations? Yes. yes. Yep. Um, weakened supporting pelvic structures? No. Impaired vision? No. Cognition? No. no. And uh, physiological factors? Re you know, reluctance to use the call light, bedpan? No. Now, increased urinary production. Urine production? Do we have that? No. 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 It's in, you see how that one's in brackets? Mm -hmm. What happens is Nanda gets together every two years and when they're adding things, or taking away items, they bracket them for two years to and, and make the decision whether it's going to stay or not. And then when it, they decide it's going to stay, they take the brackets off. So the next edition, if they've decided that that's actually going to stay, it will not have brackets. Okay, so we've got environmental and neuromuscular, right? Mm -hmm. So our related to is um, neuromuscular impairment and altered environment, right? Okay, our, our evidence, our signs and symptoms are as evidenced by Right side of weakness. And what's our altered environment? Urinal not at his side. Can't find a urinal. Yeah, you can put CVA. You can put CVA in there. You can add it. Okay, so our problem would read urinary incontinence functional related to neuromuscular impairment and altered environment as evidenced by right side of weakness, CVA, and can't find the urinal. Okay? Next week we'll build on that one. Done. Everyone feel comfortable with that? Questions? You're getting it? Nope. I, I am. I just want to know, 
So when you picked elimination out, it was just one of the main specific things from basic human need. Yeah. That's all it I mean, and then yeah. that's when you just build on. Yeah. I'm not I'm not really prioritizing which ones would be a priority at mm -hmm. this point in time. Okay. You guys aren't ready for that. I'm trying to like lead you so that we can when we build on this, it can be really concrete okay. for you guys. So, I'm probably picking the easier ones okay. to do that will be helpful for you guys to do. Um, although there, his physical mobility is is the priority with this particular case study. And the etiology is always a related to factor. Yes, and it's always from your book. The first year of this program, you always take it from your book. Okay. Word for word. Don't add your own words. Word for word. In the first one, we combined two of the basic human needs. Is there any other two that you would combine, or is that the only one? No, they overlap. Um, you'll see prevent. Uh, Frequently, you'll see prevention from harm and asepsis as, as um, like skin issues kind of overlap between those two basic human needs. So you right. see them um, hand in hand a lot. But no, it, no, it, I can't pinpoint and say you're going to see this one, this one, this one. You know, if you, if you put just activity for that one, basic human need, that would have been fine. It would have been fine to, to have just that one. Yeah. Okay. Uh, are we ready for constipation? Sure. All right. Let me erase this. And let's look at constipation. We're still in elimination as our basic human need. Um, 153 is just plain old constipation. Normal frequency of defecation accompanied by difficult or incomplete passages of stool and or passages of excessively hard, dry stool. Okay. Decreased speed, bowel movement with hard is what we'll put as our definition. Um, risk for and 159. At risk for a decrease in normal frequency of defecation accompanied by difficult or incomplete passage of stool and or passage of excessively hard. Oh, is that the same one? It's the same exact thing except oh. it has risk for in front of it. Oh. We'll deal with it okay. in a minute. Um, perceived. Constipation perceived 157. Self-diagnosis of constipation and abuse of laxatives, enemas, and suppositories to ensure a daily bowel movement. Mm -hmm. yeah, okay. You want to leave the, the, the constipation perceived? No. 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 Do we have evidence that, that, that he's, I, I, I guess, well, hold on. I guess That's that when, when, when we read, the, let's read the definition for it again and decide. Self-diagnosis of constipation and abuse of laxatives, enemas, and suppositories to ensure a daily bowel movement. He's only having one every three days. Right. And it's because of the not, he's ta not taking meds to have a bowel movement. He's taking meds for his hypertension, and that's why they have to give him something. Right, right. And there'll, there'll be a couple of other reasons why he, he is needing medication. But the perceived one is, is almost, it's, it's like um, a lot of elderly people feel like if they don't have that bowel movement every morning that they need to take something. Or um, someone who, because of that, will take multiple um, medications to move their bowels every day, even though it might not be required. Okay? So can we, everyone feel comfortable? Yeah, right. that Sometimes you have to read them a couple of times and, and think about who your patient is. Okay, do we have an actual problem or do we have a risk for? Very good. We have an actual problem. The man's not moving his bowels unless we give him something. So it's not a risk for, it's an actual. So we can get rid of our risk for. All right, so we're at constipation as our problem. Okay, and now do we have any subjective data? Yeah, I you know I didn't put a lot of sub I didn't put a lot of subjective data in this case study, and that's why you're seeing it. But when you're out there in clinical, you probably will have subjective data. Okay, I don't want to think that we're just throwing subjective data away because you definitely will have it. 
Um, our objective data is? Needs meds to move his bowels. Okay, we're having um, BM every three days with meds. Now, if you knew what meds that he was receiving, you would just plug those right in to your objective data. You know, whether it was uh, milk and mag on the second evening, you know, suppository on the third day, if that doesn't work in the afternoon of fleets, whatever it is, that's pretty standard. Plug it right in there. Anything else you want to put in there? What's our, what's our umbrella of why he's there? Right-sided weakness. Right, and I think that we're going to find that that right-sided weakness has become an issue. Okay, I won't put it down there yet. Let's look at our related to and see if we need to add that as our, as our backup evidence. So go to 153. Our related, bleh, sorry, our related factors. Um, irregular defecation habits, inadequate toileting. Do we have that? Yep. Yes. Well, do we? No. Yeah. We. I mean, I don't. I don't know that we can. That we have enough evidence or data to say that that he's got bad habits or or, or in a, you know, irregular. What do they mean by timing? Timeliness, inadequate to have its timeliness positioning for defecation. Probably, probably when you're when you look at timeliness, getting him to the bathroom in time and not having to hold it. Because remember, he's dependent on us. Okay, insufficient physical activity. Do we have? Yes. Yeah, we do. We definitely have insufficient yeah. physical activity. So keep that in your mind. Recent environmental changes. Yes. Right. He's just been admitted. So definitely, um, habitual denial, ignoring. Okay, emotional stress, depression. I don't think we've got that. Think of the evidence that we have. Um, pharmacological. Now, we, t we did a lot of talking on that first day when we were clustering about certain medications causing constipation. If we knew exactly the class of medication that this patient was on, we would plug that in addition into our related factors, okay? We don't know specifically, but we would put them in there if we knew what class. One of the students asked, well, Lori, if you know that calcium channel blockers cause constipation, why don't you just change that medication? And my answer was, that would be well and good, but is there another class of medication that would do the same thing? for our patient's heart? Probably not. So side effects of medication, sometimes you have to live with and you have to treat themselves because there's nothing, there's no other class of drugs that are, that will work as well, okay, for whatever that particular problem is, okay? All right, so then we've, let's turn the page and see if there's something on the other page. I don't know. Oh, we have hemorrhoids. Um, abscesses, ulcers, no. stuff, uh, prostate enlargement, no. neurological impairment. Yes. We got that. Electrolyte imbalance, no. poor eating habits, no. in um, inadequate dentition, which is um, their dentures aren't fitting properly, no. decreased mobility of the GI tract. No. Yes. That well, that's like so after surgery. Activity. It's kind of like after surgery when you have your anesthesia on board or you're taking medications like pain medications that slow everything down. That's probably what that is. All right, so we have, what do we have here? We have the neurological impairment. Mm -hmm. Okay, and, okay, so we have, let's do them one at a time. Insufficient activity. What else? Uh, change in environment and a neuro impairment. I use this, the triangle, a lot that's for change, just so that you can get used to me doing that, because I use that a lot. Okay, and now our S, our as evidenced by, is what? Right-sided weakness, yep, because that's our 
our big umbrella issue, and it's our neuro impairment. TVA, yeah, you can put that in too. We've got to add it over here, don't forget. And our big evidence is what? What's his bowel? Every three days. Yeah, BM, BM, every three days, a few three days. Okay, so our problem is going to read constipation related to insufficient activity, change in environment, neuro impairment as evidenced by right sided weakness, CVA, and BMQ three days, or every three days. I would probably, just, just an FYI, I would probably put this, the BM every three days, I would probably put that first. Just a, just a little tidbit since, you know, that's the overriding symptom. <laughs> Okay? So now we've got what? Three problems? One, yeah. two, three? Everyone feeling a little bit better about it? Questions? For a while, you're going to have to make these lists. And I suggest that you continue to do that until you start knowing the definitions. And eventually, you will. Eventually, you'll look at that card and you'll be able to say, no, 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 no. I don't know about this one. Look it up. Eliminate it. But for a while, you're going to have to make the list because you just don't know those definitions. Eventually, though, it gets easier and easier. It's tedious at first, but then eventually you'll know yourself. You'll know the definitions. Okay? So we've got our first four columns filled. Next week, we'll start expected outcomes. We will also, because the expected outcomes don't take that long to make, to write, We'll also do a few more problems, okay? I'd like to do as many diagnoses as we can in this environment before you go out, all right? Any questions? Pack your stuff and don't open it until next week. <laughs> <laughs>